Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a look at two great reasons to use Quick Develop in Lightroom Classic. The first is that if you're like most photographers, you may find it tempting to go to the Develop module and start enhancing photographs before you finish culling or editing down a photo shoot to your final selects. Unfortunately, this often leads to a decrease in productivity because we spend time editing images that aren't a part of our final selection. So to avoid this, we can use Quick Develop to make adjustments in the library module. Let's double click to view this image larger. And then I'm going to use the disclosure triangles in order to view all of the options in Quick Develop. And in fact, these aren't all of the options. If I hold the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows, we can see that the clarity switches to sharpening and the vibrance switches to saturation. We can use the icons to either decrease or increase the values for each of these different options. The ones on the far left and far right are going to increase or decrease in larger increments than the ones in the center. So let me click to increase the exposure by one stop. And then I'm going to decrease the highlights as well as the blacks. We can also apply different presets if we're looking to change the look and feel of the image. In this case, it doesn't quite match the mood that I was going for, so you can always use Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows in order to undo the addition of a preset. We can also change the crop ratio, if I needed this 16 by nine, for example, and we can change the treatment to color or black and white, either by using the treatment option or again, by using one of these presets, such as the black and white presets. And at any time, we can reset the file to return to the original image because all of the changes that we make are non-destructive. All right, I'll tap G to go to grid view again. And this time, let's select these four images. I'm going to double click on this one to view it in loop view, but we can see in the film strip, they're all still selected. If I want my changes to be applied to all of the selected images, I can enable auto sync by clicking on this switch in the library module. Now, when I make a change in quick develop, Lightroom is going to change all of the images. Under tone control, I'll click auto and Lightroom will intelligently analyze each one of these images and make an auto correction. We can see that the thumbnails for all of the images have been updated in the film strip. If I wanted to change the white balance, in this case, I feel that they're a little bit too cool, then I can click on the icon to the right of temperature in order to warm the image. I think that's a little bit too far. So I'll use the icon here to move it back a little cooler in smaller increments. In fact, if I hold down the shift key, I can move it in half of the increment of whatever icon I click on. Of course, we have more control in the develop module, which we'll cover more in depth in later videos. Now, the second great reason to use quick develop is when you want to make relative changes to your photographs. When I chose the auto button under the tone control, all of the images that were selected were independently analyzed and automatically corrected. Now, the same thing would have happened had I been in the develop module and had auto sync enabled and then clicked on the auto button. But what I wanna point out here is that each one of these images has a different exposure value. So here we're looking at a plus 0.94. We have plus 0.74, 1.22 and 0.16. Now when we're in the develop module, when we make a change to one of the images, and we have auto sync enabled, it's going to make an absolute change. So for example, if I increase the exposure here to plus one stop, well, Lightroom Classic isn't going to add that relative amount to each of the other sliders. Instead, it's going to set each one of those to the exact same slider value, the plus one stop. I'm going to use Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows in order to back up and undo those changes. And I'll also disable the auto sync. Then we'll return to the library module. And this time, if I just want to add 
a third of a stop to each one of the images, I can click on the icon and instead of moving each of the photo's values to the exact same amount, it will add a third of a stop to each image. Excellent, let's disable auto sync and tap G to return to grid view. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.